Hey, so you're wondering about podcast artwork, podcast cover art. How do you make this stand out and really help you grow your show? In this video, I'm going to go through the specs and I'm going to go through how to create podcast artwork for free and how to really make it stand out. What makes artwork stand out that really grows your listeners? Podcast cover art or podcast artwork is a bit of a funny one because obviously it's a little bit subjective. It is, it's art. It's like, it's a design that you create. You might create something that some people like and some that others don't like, but there are definitely guidelines that you can follow to create artwork that stands out. There's some good rules of thumb to create artwork that will attract listeners and work best for your show to make you really stand out in those directories. There's also the technical side as well. You know, what actual size should this artwork be? What format should it be? We take that mostly from Apple because they were really, you know, they were the kind of ones that started up the space in many ways. And their directory, Apple Podcasts, is still the premium, the primary, the main way that people find and listen to podcasts. So that's where we take our guidelines from. And many other directories draw from those guidelines. So if you make it fit with Apple, it'll fit with all the rest, including Spotify, who's the kind of the ones that are nipping at their heels. And we're also going to have a look at how to make that artwork for free. So how do you make it at no cost? There's a great tool that I use all the time to make artwork and we'll dive into that later on in this video as well. So let's get the techie bit out of the way to start with. What does that artwork have to be to fit into Apple? Apple's minimum guidelines are that it needs to be 1400 pixels by 1400 pixels. Okay, that's the minimum size. And they recommend 3000 by 3000. Now, there's a funny little kind of, a funny little conflict here in that most of the time when we see people keep creating artwork at 3000 by 3000, often it can be too big and it can cause trouble with the RSS feed. One of the most common ways I see RSS feeds being broken is by the artwork being too big or being the wrong format or something like that. So if you go for a 3000 by 3000, you need to make sure that you're bringing that file size down, you're compressing it, you're putting it through some kind of image compression tool. And I can put a link to a couple in the description below. So go and have a look down there. There's a few free online, but compress it down to a relatively low size. You really want it to be under 500 kilobytes, I would say, to be reliable, to not cause trouble with your feed. And actually, in most cases, 1400 by 1400 is plenty big enough as well. The only place you really see the artwork bigger is if sometimes you tr you appear in um, certain new noteworthy lists or in the directory at the top. But I mean, you can see if you look at iTunes here, I've got it on the screen, you can see that the, the featured ones popping along the top here, that's actually a banner. It's not even the artwork that shows. So if you do get featured more often than not, Apple will get in touch, they'll talk to you and they'll get a banner for your show. Um, and actually most of the time you have to ask to get that done. We've actually got an article on this site around how to get featured in iTunes, in Apple Podcasts. So go over to the link that's in the description again to have a look at that and you'll see what's involved in getting those banners um, and being featured in Apple Podcasts like that. So by all means, go for 3000 by 3000 if you can get it compressed down, but 1400 by 1400, uh, 3, yeah, it was 3000, but 1400 by 1400 is actually totally fine in most cases, in all cases as well. That's the minimum and they will take that size. Now you want a few different formats, so you can have it in a JPEG or a PNG, generally the most reliable. Um, and that's essentially it. As long as you cover those bases, as long as it's that size and that file format and under 500 kilobytes, if you can at all manage it, then that should fit the guidelines for Apple Podcasts and upload no worries at all. Next, let's look at how to make artwork that really stands out. Okay. What makes artwork that really stands out? I've got iTunes here in front of me. I'm having a look through and I think we should look at some examples. So I'm going to go through it and it might be some stand out more to you and less to me, but there's a few here that stand out. If I look through this top list, for example, actually this one here, so really high contrast, I think works well. So 
Boris. <laughs> the BBC Radio 4 show on Boris. So dark blue background, nice big picture in the middle, and one big bit of text. Just Boris, white on black. High contrast, simple, there's not much in there. Um, and that really makes it stand out. This is really the rule of thumb for me. You want your artwork to show up in a really simple way, um, to look good while still quite small, okay? Because this is how most people see your podcast artwork. They're either browsing through on the desktop like this in a, di in a directory, or they're looking on their phone and they're scrolling through their player app on their phone. Either way, that thing is going to be quite small, okay? So look at some examples here. This OMG Bro one next to it stands out. Certainly some bright, vivid colours. I would suggest that font is actually maybe even a bit too complex because is this, at this size, uh, it's almost a little bit hard to read. I can't see, I could make a mistake there. I could, that G is not quite obvious. It's a G potentially. I can't really see the detail of the people here. They're maybe even a bit smaller. Um, and this text here, see the little subtitle underneath OMG Bro, it doesn't really stand. I can't read that at all. So remember that in most cases, you're designing artwork to be readable very small. Now, over here, you've got the Australian True Crime one. This stands out, pretty simple. Text, really, just text. And a little subtitle there, that's just the authors. But I can just about read them. It's not too bad. But even that, I would suggest, is quite small. Generally, about the smallest you want your text to be is potentially over here looking at Dino Dome. So we've got a show here called Dino Dome. And that text there, I would say, is about as small as it gets um, in terms of being able to see it when you're just kind of skimming through. So the rule of thumb really is simple images, simple text, not too much text, text pretty big, very high contrast, so that when you're skimming through, really that text is going to be your title. And hopefully your title makes it really clear what that show's about. So somebody's skimming through, the colours, the contrast stand out, the words jump out at them to show them what this is all about. This one here, Boris, I mean, that makes sense. Like, <laughs> we know that's going to be a show investigating the, the nonsense um, going on in the government here in the UK around Boris Johnson. So that's pretty obvious. Dino Dome kind of makes sense to me. It's something about dinosaurs. <laughs> um, Australian true crime as well. Very good one, because that's pretty obvious. It's just that it does what it says in the tin. Australian true crime. So tying into the title of the show, people are searching for things like that. People are searching for true crime. So this is a niche of that Australian true crime and the podcast artwork reflects that really well. Just a few words on there. Nicely designed, but very simple. And this one here, we mean well. I think that is actually a really good example of artwork that is just super simple, but looks good. It's just nice typography, well styled, one tiny little illustration, and just their brand colours behind it, I presume. And I presume it's something around maybe mental health, or maybe looking after each other, or something like that. It, it gives an impression, though, about what it's about. And that, again, that's what we're looking for. Again, rule of thumb, nice big bold text, very simple. Don't try and fit in too much. I generally think if you can have a nice textured background that suggests the, the topic. So, again, this Australian true crime one, a really good example there, because that textured background stands out. It looks good. Maybe suggests the topic as in it's black and dark and, you know, true crime, dark a dark subject, and then just nice, bold, simple text over the top of that. Just a few words, anything up to three, five, six, seven words, um, if you can fit that in. If you can make your podcast artwork only that, then that is really good. I mean, here's Planet Money. Planet Money is a good example there. Planet Money, expert show, so they know how to do it. They've just got the title of the show, which suggests exactly what the show's about, Planet Money. One little illustration to show that, so it's... Uh, so I don't know how that relates to money, but <laughs> an astronaut. So something to do with the planet. Oh, yeah, it's, uh, I can just about make out. I think that's Benjamin. Is that Franklin? Is the guy, the guy off the dollar notes? American audience will know better than I. Um, but really simple, really simple. The rest is history as well. Nice and simple. Just nice big text at the top. I could say that could actually be clearer, though. That font is not very clear. I would make that stand out a lot more. Much more bright white on red. 
maybe even make that bigger, maybe three lines, the rest or the rest is and history, make history even bigger and the illustration's a bit smaller. That's what I would suggest. But I hope that gives you an idea. That's what we're looking for in terms of podcast artwork. We want nice and simple life and death. There's a really good one there. I like that one a lot, actually, because it's super big text. That text shows you exactly what the show is about. Lovely contrast here. So black on light and then you've got white on light and you've got red on it. But lovely design here as well. It's a good typography here, how they've laid it out. So stuff like that is really good. What the finance here as well can tell exactly what that show's about. And it gives a really nice little bit of personality in the background with that kind of, that super lady um, approach is showing the, the logo under the jacket. Um, so I really like that as well. Bad with money as well. Diversifying, all really good. Big, bold text, good contrast, nice illustration. That's what makes for good artwork. So let's look at an example of how to design a podcast artwork in a free package. So this won't cost you a thing, although I'll show you a few things that you might want to pay extra for, but you don't have to at all. But this is all in Canva, which is a tool I absolutely love for design. We use this in our company all the time at the Podcast Host for uh, for banners, for the blog, for illustrations, for presentations, for um, business cards, logos, all sorts of stuff. Uh, we use it all the time and it's great for podcast artwork. So if you load up Canva, so canva.com, again, you can create a free um, account, no worries at all. And they give you loads of different resources for free. So if I type in podcast in the what will you design, um, you can see that they give you a couple of options. We've got podcast cover is one of the default options. And straight away, you see that they have loads of different templates here that you can take and you can customize. There's absolutely tons of them here. Um, and a lot of them follow those rules of thumb that I was talking about. A lot of them actually are not necessarily as detailed as I'd suggest. So there's a lot of them including way too much detail here, I would say. Um, but some don't. So casual chatting, there's a nice one. News podcast, nice big one. There's a nice big simple one. I like that one. This one too, talk about mental health. Nice little illustration at the bottom, good colors, a nice bright uh, bold text too. So there's quite a few in here which have that kind of format. And the great thing is that um, loads of these are entirely free to use. So if you hover over them, you can see the difference. So down here, see this thank you 100k listeners, that's got a pro sign on it. And that means you have to subscribe to get it, I believe. What's the pricing these days? Uh, I'll have a quick look to show you. Um, so you can get a free trial, but uh, the pricing will be, what is it now? 99 per year or 9.99 a month, 10 a month. Yeah. So I bet you that's the same in dollars. If you're in the US, it'll be $10 and $99 per year. So if you think you'll be designing a lot of stuff, um, putting a lot out on social media, it's great for social media posts and that kind of stuff. No affiliate deal here, by the way. I just really like Canva. <laughs> so we get nothing if you sign up and actually so many things in here for free. So you don't need to, but just wanted to give you an idea. But if you don't want to, if you're on a free plan, just avoid these ones with the little crowns and the other ones are for free. So let's go through and find one of the free templates. Uh, Stuart Podcast Night Discussion. Which one? Will we go with one of the ones I had down here. So this news podcast one, I actually quite like that one. Let's go with that. And if you go in here and I can say, um, we can edit it. So in here, you can edit it really easy. All you do is... Uh, let's see, um, let's say we're doing it for our show podcraft. So you can move them around, you can edit it really easy. Um, and you can add in more elements really simply as well. So I've got that. Uh, I want to change, let's say I want to change this image, edit image. What I can do is I can change the colors, I can change the style. Or I could get rid of it altogether and say, my show is about, uh, well, let's make it actually, I'm going to go with mountain bikes apart. This is a show that I used to run uh, about mountain biking. I'll customize it to be more along those lines. So mountain bikes part, I've got rid of that little logo at the top because actually that doesn't suit the type of podcast it is. What I'll do is I'll go to elements and I'm going to search for bike. 
Let's see what we can find around bikes. So again, it's similar in here in that some of the elements are pro. You can see if you hover over it, you see that little crown, but many of them are not. Many of them you can just use. No worries at all. What about this one here? So if I just click that, it'll appear on here. And I can put that up at the top here. What about if I had my little bike riding the, uh, the text? Let's make the text really big and bright. And I'll have my little bike as if he's riding the text up here. And I can make him a bit bigger. I'm going to make him white to match the uh, text as well. All I do to change the color is click on him. And then up here you get the images. Uh, click the black and that lets me choose a different color. You can see that. The background as well. I actually think this could be a lot more um, contrasting. Uh, the white on blue is okay, <clears throat> but I would maybe make the background even darker. And to fit mountain bikes, what's what's mountain bike? Green? Green for grass? Brown for mud, maybe? I like that. Brown for mud. Mountain biking, you get plenty of mud. And that means I'm maybe going to change these little illustrations too. So I'm shift clicking. So I click on one of those little arcs, click on another. Can I do that? Yeah, there we go. Uh, I'm going to click on one at a time, actually just to change them. And it looks like that blue is up here. So it's just a stroke. So I'm just going to change that to maybe black actually. Would that work? Yeah, that could work actually. So black on brown. There we go. And that keeps that texture in the background. These little circles too. Will I keep them in? I'm going to delete the circle up here actually behind the bike because it's kind of getting in the way of the bike. So I'm just hitting the delete button there. Keeping that there. Um, I'll keep these ones actually, um, but I might change the color to be uh, darker. Let's go for another brown. Right, that's the default colors. I'm going to bring in, um, what will I do? I can get perhaps, uh, I wonder if an orange would work on that or a pink or a purple blue. I'm going to go with the green actually because that kind of fits the mountain bike in the outdoorsy style. So I'm going to change that to a green. Click the orange, go with green there. So that fits with for me. I wonder what else I could do. I could maybe add. You get quite a lot of, um, I wonder, I'm going to see if there's any mud. <laughs> yeah, there we go. So there's a couple of pro ones there, but we've got... Uh, See, what I can do actually, the background, we could change this background altogether. I wonder if there's a photo, a free photo of mud I could use. Let's see. Oh, here's some. Here's a free one. So what I can do is if I drag that, actually I need to delete it again. If I drag it off the side, but I drag it onto the background like that, you see that it turns into the background for the uh, for the whole thing. And there's things I can do with that then, because what I can do is that kind of stands out a bit. I kind of want to make that darker. So what I can do is if I edit image, I should be able to apply a filter. See all. And if I go in here, I can turn it black and white, for example. That could work quite well. Or that drama makes it quite dark. And then perhaps I can make it even darker with the brightness filter here. There we go. So I've got a nice texture of mud in the background. And I could have any photo. So if you have some photos of yourself, you can do that too. And if you do want to bring in your own photos, that's absolutely easy enough too. Let me show you that very quickly. Here we go. So I've opened up my photos folder. Obviously, if I was wanting to do this uh, and had a bit more time to do it, I would bring in uh, a photo of me mountain biking. Uh, but for now, what I can do is just upload it. So I just, all I did was drag that photo onto the screen and it automatically uploads into your own image. So you can see the upload section here and that shows everything that you've uploaded to your library in the past. So I can drag that on. I could make that the background if I wanted to, that could work. But actually I'm gonna drag it on and show you what it looks like if you have a photo of yourself. And again, you could also get a photo that is um, see-through. So like a PNG with a transparent background. So that it's just a picture of yourself. Now I think actually Canva can do that. Let me a sec to figure that out just for one second. 
because I think if I, so I select the image, edit image, there's so many useful tools in here, adjust and filter, ah, there we go, right there, background remover. Um, oh, now that looks like a pro tool. Um, so to do this for free, uh, you may have to use that uh, elsewhere. So you might have to go into Photoshop or um, whatever image editing package you have. Uh, you can remove backgrounds in that way, or you can just have it as a background. Like if I drag that image on, I'll show you again if I drag it in as the background for this for the whole thing. That's quite cool as well. But equally, I'll show you how the background remover works. Uh, so click on it, edit image, and background remover. Ticking, ticking. There we go. So that's really cool. So now I've got. Uh, I'm going to undo that background actually. There we go. So how would it be like this? I like that. That's good. So, I mean, that is a relatively simple um, background and a relatively simple artwork, but it stands out. It stands out because the, the text is there. And I've, I mean, I've spent five minutes making this, obviously. You could make it much better. You can make a, back, a gradient in the background as well, actually, um, which would make this kind of this brown look a little bit better. Or I could put this mud back in there, edit the image, put the, uh, uh, the brightness back that right down. And that would do the job. I mean, that could work really well as a standout piece of podcast artwork. Okay, hope that was useful though. And I hope you can see that there's tons of stuff in here that you could work with as a, a podcast creator in Canva to create some really nice standout podcast artwork that fits those rules of thumb that I talked about a bit earlier. Thanks again for watching along. That was how to create podcast artwork. Just in summary, remember you're looking for artwork that is relatively simple, works on a very small scale, probably generally nice bright text uh, or very dark text, essentially high contrast text, bright on dark or dark on light, not too much as well. Something that really tells the listener what the show's all about. If your podcast name isn't super clear, then maybe you will fit in a small t subtitle, but it has to be quite big to stand out in the podcast directories. Uh, and then aside to the text, maybe just a simple illustration, a photo if you really want it, um, but actually just a simple little illustration or a nice textured background that suggests that the topic can be really good as well. If you want to follow along to more of these videos, appreciate you following along. I hope it's been useful to you. Uh, do hit that alert button, that subscribe button to make sure you get more of our videos in future. Um, and go along to thepodcasthost.com for more on this. There's loads of links in the description below that will take you to more resources around podcast artwork, how to start a podcast, and to our podcast maker tool, Alitu, which is how you can make your podcast in the easiest possible way. Alitu helps you record your episodes with a call recorder built in, solar recorder built in, and then it'll put together your episodes for you, as in it'll bring in the music, put in the transformations from the music to the voice. It'll uh, help you with the editing as well. I've got a custom podcast editor in there too, and it'll do all your cleanup. It does noise reduction, leveling, all of that stuff. And now as well, we've got hosting built right into Alitu, so you can host your podcast in Alitu too. So Alitu really is all you need to run your podcast start to finish. Thanks again for watching. I've been Colin from thepodcasthost.com and I'll see you on a future one.